The music was always very important, but you know, never thought of it as a career. And I thought I was going to go to law school. My senior year of college, I came home and I had some friends that had a band. They were going on a tour and uh, needed someone to drive their truck. So I started driving their truck and humping their gear. One day the sound man didn't show up and it was like, uh, hey Ed, you're mixing the show tonight. So I did and I wasn't very good at it, but uh, the bug kind of got me. A light went off and I, I knew what my special purpose in life was going to be. I've had the opportunity to work with Michael Jackson, and Jackson Brown, Winona, Bob Seger, Iggy Pop, uh, Neil Diamond. I've got to work with Eric Clapton as we did um, Tears in Heaven. Rolling Stones, I spent 15 years working for the Rolling Stones and traveling the world with them. You know, unbelievable experience. I also got to make a couple records with Ringo Starr and with, uh, with George Harrison. Um, I mean, lovely people who gets the opportunity to do that. It's been a great thing to be able to know these people. Well, it's a little like being Zelig you know, for Forrest Gump. You find yourself in these situations because you figured out how to uh, produce or engineer or mix music. You know, my mantra is always when I, when I come to work, my intent that day is to be open, honest, and giving. And if I can do that, anything can come out of that. And that's contagious. You have to find a way to encourage people, you know, to get their heart and their soul and their message across. When I first met Bonnie Raitt, we sat down and I think we spent about two hours talking and I remember mostly just laughing. You know, it was like I was with uh, old friends and I hope that uh, she felt the same way. And I had already known that, you know, what a major talent she was, you know, what a great guitar player she was, what an unbelievable voice she had. And, um, and I loved the music that she was making and I was just thrilled, you know, I was just thrilled to be there. When we first went in, we cut a record that became Nick of Time and we set up her and her band in the studio and cut it live. And it was just fun, you know, we just laughed our way through this record. Served her and served the music, and it was a great experience. We didn't do it expecting any kind of success or gold records or money or anything. And at the end of the day, when it went on to win, uh, Nick of Time went on to win all these Grammys and sell millions of records and explode her career, and well, there was icing on the cake. And it, you know, it was great icing on the cake. A year and a half later, we went in the studio and started on uh, Luck of the Draw which was her second record that we did with, with Don and myself and Bonnie as a team. Um, Luck of the Draw is, for me, is one of those that when I put it on, that the part that I did is based in emotion. It just feels great and it, and it sounds great. The third record we did together was um, Longing in Their Hearts. Um, I do have to say that I got a Grammy for that for Best Engineer Recording, and it, it's meaningful. It, it means a lot. The material was great, and, and on that she started writing, and I thought lyrically they were really great. It was a little harder record to make because there were expectations and I was feeling more pressure. But Long In Their Hearts, you know, I just went back and listened to it, and it was pretty darn good. The most satisfying part is when you know you got it, you got the foundation of this song and it's working and it's moving you, you know, it's just, and the whole world disappears and the only thing that's there is really the music. And I can turn the speakers up and the music is just, just over me and I can feel it and I'm inside of it. And there are moments when I will go, Yahoo, I, you know what, I got it. This is why I'm here. This is the greatest thing in the whole world. <laughs>